Imagine you're standing at the edge of a cliff and the weight of your struggle is like a backpack filled with stones pulling you down. Now picture standing there alone, feeling the weight of that burden, but you're convinced that the bravest thing that you could do is to carry that weight silently. Now this scenario is not just metaphorical, but it in, it, it in fact reflects the reality of countless men worldwide who are grappling with their mental health in silence. See, as someone who has lived across continents, as someone who's lived across continents, I've noticed a common thread amongst men, a reluctance to speak up about moments of weakness. A reluctance to speak up about moments of weakness from the bustling streets of Nigeria to the meeting rooms in Canada and now to the US, the reluctance to speak up is universal. But after experiencing the transformative power of breaking that silence in my own life, I am convinced it is time for us to redefine strength, embrace vulnerability, and in fact, embrace vulnerability and unlock the collaborative potential that is within us. And so today, we're challenging norms, we're sharing stories to help you realize the true strength that comes from speaking up. According to a research that was done, a study that was done by the American Journal for Men's Health, they published and said that men were significantly less likely than women, men were significantly less likely than women to seek help for depression, substance use, and stress. Also, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention said that men were 3.9 times less likely to see, more likely to die by suicide, by suicide than women. All of this was attributed to emotional isolation and a reluctance to seek help. Just show the the statistics are quite profound. Silence that goes beyond geographical boundaries. And I want you to know that whether you know it or not, this is an issue that affects our brothers, our fathers, our friends, our colleagues. And so that's why today we're exploring the cost of silence but most importantly, the remarkable strength that can be found in openly sharing our personal struggles. Regardless of their background, men grapple with internal struggles and they choose silence over shared strength. And when we look at some of the reasons why men do this, we realize that societal norms play a significant role. We've been convinced that Stoicism is the epitome of strength. That's what we're made to believe. And so breaking the silence becomes a rebellion against that norm, a rebellion that can actually liberate us from the mental prisons that we've unknowingly constructed for ourselves. You see, when people realize that when they share their stories, it can lead to solutions and emotional support, it strengthens communities and fosters innovation. You see, in 20 diagnosed with cancer, it was the most difficult experience for me and my family. My, I mean, my father was an epitome of strength. He was my friend. He was a brave man. I had watched this man all my life growing up. I had watched him go through difficulty and pain, and he never flinched. Never saw any moment of weakness with my dad. So you can imagine how heartbroken I was when I would call my mother and I would hear him wailing in the background in pain. This was a difficult experience for me. And months later, we lost him to cancer. And I held on to that pain for a while, not knowing what to do with it. I continued to carry that pain on my own, just believing, just convinced that this was a testament to my strength. And so the facade of everything is fine in my shield. But the emotional toll it took on me was insurmountable. 
after lashing out at a couple of friends a few times, realized there was something wrong. And so I took a step back and said, I need really going on with me. And so I spoke to a few trusted friends about what I was going through. And they all shared their own experiences about losing a loved one to cancer with me. And I was surprised that I had people in my life who had actually gone through the same experience and I did not know. And they gave me a few tips and strategies on how to deal. They helped me unpack my experience. And after that, I gained the courage to really deal with the grief that I was dealing with. You see, sharing my personal struggles, I discovered a network of support that I would have never found if I never spoke up. You see, this personal journey is not just unique, but it, it, it is one struggle, the silent struggle that many go through. It underscores the transformative power of breaking the silence, revealing that strength is not found in stoic solitude, but in the collective embrace of shared vulnerability. My experience became a testament to the fact that I was not alone in my battles, but that we're all part of a shared human experience, one that's woven with both joy and sorrow. And by sharing our story, we not only heal individually, but we contribute to the broader narrative, one that actually challenges the stigma around speaking up about personal struggles. See, as a facility man, I was trapped in the illusion that every problem had to be mine to solve. <laughs> See, my ego convinced me that asking for help was a professional shortcoming. And so, I, you can see I believe the strength model. And, you know, that this was actually a hindrance to me, both personally and professionally. And so one time I became sick and couldn't do much for myself. And so I was forced to ask for help. And so I asked a few people at work for some help. I surprised everything that I thought could not be done without me, they actually got done. <laughs> you see, I realized that my silence was actually a hindrance. My silence was actually the stumbling block. And that if only I knew how to ask for help, that I would get help. You see, collaborative problem solving became the norm from that day. And so every time we would get into our team, I would be the first. If I was ever going through any challenge, I was the first. If there was anyone in the room who could help with this particular project, I am accepting help. Please see me after this meeting. I'm willing to work this out with you. That became the norm going forward from that day. And it just made me understand that, it just made me understand that all I needed to do was open up my mouth and ask for help. All I needed to do in that moment was break the silence. I came to many could far surpass the capabilities of one. You see, it's our egos it's that will insist on individualism. But I think that's a deceptive obstacle to progress. And so it's important for us to take advantage of the help that we have within the team. Think about it. From the light bulb discovery to space exploration, from the discovery of the gene editing technology to the Higgs boson discovery, it's the combined efforts of diverse minds that lead to innovation. I want to share with you four things today that I think we can all start embracing from today that will help us begin to break the silence and speak up. The first thing is self-reflection. You see, it's important that we ask ourselves the question, what really is driving the reluctance to share? Is it the fear of judgment? Is it the fear of rejection? Is it the fear of vulnerability and how people are going to handle your vulnerability? You see, for me, I had to take a step back and really figure out why I was acting the way I was. I really had to self-reflect 
and think about, I was lashing out at my friends. I came to realize I was still dealing with grief. Now, understanding the root cause of your reluctance to share is the first step towards a resolution. The second one is start with by sharing the small challenges. For me, I noticed that whenever I, whenever I, you know, shared my challenge with some with the team, there was always someone on the team who had an idea or two that had not occurred to me. And if they didn't have the answers, they always were, you know, very receptive and they were able to refer me to someone who had the answer. You see, by opening up about these things in those meetings, it really helped my confidence. And slowly but surely, I started to share the challenges and I started to get comfortable doing that. The third thing, share with trusted confidence. See, when you share your struggles with trusted friends, a therapist maybe, family members who are trusted, you see, it helps you build trust. When you, when you share your struggles with trusted friends, it helps you build more trust. Building trust with a few individuals can actually help, help you practice vulnerability in a safe and a supportive environment. And the fourth thing is create safe spaces. It's important that we create safe rooms where people can actually open up about their personal struggles, where vulnerability is met with where vulnerability is really met with understanding and not judgment. Open up about personal struggles, about your personal struggles, and encourage others to do the same thing. And together we can create a culture that values openness and collaboration. It's our culture that celebrates individual brilliance, yet it's the, collab yet it's the collaboration that sparks innovative solutions. We've been made to believe that finding the answer to a difficult problem independently is the best way to go. But we've seen that when you share with others, you actually find answers. You discover solutions. And so I dare say it's time for us to break the silence and start sharing, because by embracing the strength in sharing, we're not, we pave the way for innovative solutions, stronger communities, and most importantly, we save lives. Thank you.